So good morning, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. To begin with, let me thank the organizers of this forum for drawing our attention to the themes and topics that are important for all of us today. Today I would like to speak about issues both historical and contemporary. First, I will offer my view on the impact art and music had as catalyst to help end the Soviet rule in Latvia in early 1990s. Second, I am going to touch upon the role of culture in overcoming the current economic crisis in the Baltic region. The two topics may seem independent and separate, but in fact, they have much in common as my presentation will seek to point out. More than 20 years have passed since the end of the Cold War. Arguably, the events of that time can now be described as historical and somewhat distant from our experience. Two weeks ago, the United States President Barack Obama spoke about the recent peaceful revolution in Egypt. President Obama compared Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak's designation to such milestones in history as the fall of Berlin Wall and Gandhi leading his people into the street. In our visual memory, we all have images of German people tearing down the wall separating two Germanies and the scenes of reunion and widespread jubila jubilation that took place afterwards. The collapse of the Soviet Union and its satellites was remarkable not only for what it achieved. Equally impressive was the way in which the great goals of freedom and liberation were reached. The Soviet Union collapsed due to its moral bankruptcy, for it had lost every legitimate ground for exercising state authority. Like today in Egypt, People in the streets made it clear that the political life could not continue in the way it had for the previous 50 years. The message was, de was delivered to the Soviet Union leaders and to the world in the best traditions of non-violent resistance. It is not the moment how to explore the com complicated historical grounds for the demise of the Soviet Union, but I would like to emphasize the role of culture, and particularly that of musical culture, in the nonviolent protests that took place in the Baltic states and especially in my country, Latvia. It can be argued that all forms of nonviolent resistance represented represent the case of the culturally inspired political action. But let's return to the historical events I was talking about. In January 1991, pro-communist political forces attempted to overthrow the newly established Latvian parliament. Latvian demonstrators managed to stop the Soviet troops from the reoccupying strategic positions, and these events are known as the days of barricades, as well as Singing revolution. Why singing revolution? That because the people participating in the barricades were singing to express their emotions and communal spirit. Their report, uh, repertory basically consisted of the Latvian songs that had been banned during the Soviet times. By singing songs, songs that the previous regime had found intolerable, they demonstrated a political stance. But there has to be some reason why, under so pressing circumstances, when their lives were in permanent danger, they, choose, they chose to engage in a musical activity at all. There are scholars who point to, to deep roots of musical tradition in the Latvian culture. True, almost every Latvian during his hair life has sung in the choir and the very strong attachment to music among Latvian dates back to many centuries. Latvia has a unique system of music schools that covers all country and gives an opportunity to every child to pursue musical education and training. 
Also, one has to admit that Latvians have a long tradition of viewing our musical culture as an expression of resistance against the foreign rule. Since Latvia, during its, its, its history, has suffered from different foreign occupations, a specific way has emerged and of encoding the message of freedom and liberation into the musical culture of the folk. The history of Latvian musical culture certainly was a stimulating factor. Yet I think that the people on the barricades found in music an indispensable source of strength and inspiration to continue, to con to continue the struggle by nonviolent means and an opportunity to form a unified spirit among themselves. Nonviolent protest requires something more than just a readiness to engage into a struggle and to courage to face one's adversaries. It requires a high level of intelligence and moral strength to be able to face our adversaries and not give up the message of peace. It seems that music can be instrumental in that process. Music making and singing in particular engages the whole human being. It is to an equal degree emotional, physical and intellectual activity. Music has some deep connection with what it means to be a human being at all. We know that music has the great capacity of building bridges and humanly relations among people. It is no wonder that the music has helped to solve many conflicts and build trust. I believe we all have experienced that special feeling of fraternity that overwhelms us after a great concert performance or, for example, symphony orchestra performance. So this is not wonder that the people in much harsher circumstances than a symphony concert faced with hardships and difficulties turned to music. My larger point is that great historical events like the nonviolent resistance to the Soviet forces in Latvia have drawn their force and vitality from our rich tradition of musical expression. Latvian people on the barricades found in music a guidance and inspiration that spoke to their common cause, cause and gave strength during the time when it was needed the most. Today, of course, the situation is different. The problems faced by the Latvian nation are of a different kind. At present, the question number one is the financial crisis and of course, it does not require so existential or an engagement as a protest against the Soviet rule 20 years ago demanded. The role of culture has changed. Latvia has one, way, one would say a continental style cultural policy. What I would like to point out is that we can discern the important role of culture even during this period of economic recovery. I will give my reason for holding such view. It is well known that the model of growth that was driven by the housing bubble caused the economic crisis in the Baltic states. In other words, that model of economic development was not sustainable since it was not based on high value added production and innovative businesses. As a consequence, the Baltic states are now working to reorient the focus of their economies in order to meet the modern standards of sustainable long-term growth. Today, it is clear for all of us that the cultural and creative industries offer enormous value and potential for economic growth. We know that the research done in European Union has confirmed the positive influence of culture and creative industries on economic and social development. Studies has, have also shown that culture is a sector which demonstrates a far higher level of economic growth than 
is the case with other economic sectors in EU. Culture, the creative sectors, and cultural tourism are important economic resources with a high level of added value. All these promote growth, improve comp competitiveness, help to create new jobs, and promote sustainable development and innovations. We must understand and increase the role of culture, creative sectors, and innovation in the context of sustainable development and economic growth. Culture rooted in cultural and arts education and lifelong learning promotes the emergence of individuals who are creative, responsible, emotionally intelligent, and rich of diverse skills. This helps individuals to be open to new challenges and innovative, and it also develops their ability for creative problem solving. Yet all these mentioned benefits are also rooted in tangible things, cultural infrastructure. If well maintained and the if in line with contemporary requirements, it helps to attract highly qualified workers, encouraging economic activity in regions, as well as high quality services related to culture, education, free time, public events, enterprise, and other areas. That is why despite current financial hardships, the Latvian government continues to support the construction of the new Latvian National Library building. Investment in culture is seen as a source for future development and prosperity. To sum up, we can say that culture has different roles in different times. During the nonviolent revolutionary activity of the 1990s, it was music that is inspired many Latvians who were in the streets to protest against the Soviet rule. Today, culture can pro prove instrumental in overcoming the financial crisis and building high value added economy. We see in culture a source of vital strength and guidance, which is always more valuable than we can imagine. I think the both historical and contemporary events are the best witnesses to that fact. It is beyond doubt that culture is a special thing of ultimate significance for every human being. I hope that my short presentation has helped to illustrate the diverse, diverse of the role of culture can be. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I would like to share with you Latvian and my personal experience in what can be called the culturally, cultural diplomacy. As you, may, as you may imagine, the relations between Latvia and Russia still are the matter of the heated interest and political disagreement. Since Russia was officially declared itself the heir to the Soviet Union, many Latvians view Russian policies and worldview with a sense of apprehension. Yet in culture, our relationship is a story of mutual interest, respect, and achievement. I have noted that the ties which can be built via culture are of a special and prestigious sort. When artists collaborate and the public is a witness to the result of the collaboration, a new value is, is created. This new value speaks for itself. In addition to having served as a minister of culture and currently being the member of parliament of Latvia, I am myself a professional musician. Next week, no, this week, I am going to St. Peter's, next week, yes, I am going to St. Petersburg to play with world world known Great Symphony Orchestra of St. Peter, St. Petersburg from St. Petersburg Philharmonie, which was previously led by distinguished conductor Evgeny Marinsky. I see this as an opportunity to collaborate with a world-class orchestra and to engage into music making that excels beyond political circumstances and has to do only with professional art. 
I am convinced that the music we are going to make will inspire people and provide some new in insights into the positive possibilities of artistic significance. It's really in the, is the case that culture has value and importance that we can never fully exhaust and predict. To put it slightly poetically, art is a prestigious jewel that fills our life with meaning that has no alternative. It is what matters the most. Thank you. So th that's it. Oh. <laughs> okay, please questions. If you have some, it would, it would be nice to to have to to change uh, to, to listen to your thoughts about the music role in culture, diplomacy, and uh, relations between different cultures, different countries. Please. Oh. No, it's of course it's classical repertoire, but uh, you know the I would like to to show that the cultural ties is much more important and much more um, <laughs> strong between people. And e even uh, we had a very difficult history between the countries and between the cultures, but uh, it helps to to be uh, the music is the first step to, to make new relations. And that is, I don't know exactly what you mentioned, but uh, I think it's, the, it's not new musical material. I am a professional musician, I am a clarinet player, I'm an academic, I'm playing um, in, with orchestra, symphony orchestra as a soloist, and it will be, of course, Max Bruch uh, comp uh, composition, but we are playing together, and it, it shows that um, uh, the relationship between Latvia and Russia and now finally it's becoming back and uh, very uh, better and better and th the first step was the um, uh, cultural festival in 2007 when the Latvian uh, opera and contemporary arts uh, exhibitions were in Moscow and it was the, the, the first step uh, to, to be closer, and it's, this is the, the, the best way, I think. The music is the most universal language, and it, it, it helps a lot. For it, It's really very serious, and of course, this uh, singing revolution, that was the, the, the first sign that this people are not going to, to, to see real violence, but uh, they, would, they would like to see just freedom, and it, it helps. It, it was very right um, strategy for that period. Yeah. So, so maybe you can repeat. <laughs> oh, uh, you mentioned about continental style of cultural policy. Could you please develop the idea of culture, uh, continental style in cultural policy? Thank you. Yeah, um, this is, uh, I mean, um, continental style. That means uh, that we have uh, state-funded, uh, 100 state-funded uh, music schools, 50 uh, uh, state-funded uh, arts schools and, uh, of course, state-funded uh, National Opera, National Theatre, National Museum, and uh, all of that is uh, funded by the state. Uh, in different, uh, we see in the United States, it is an absolutely different situation. They have, uh, everything is private. As well, the partly in the uh, United Kingdom, they have um, an, uh, another way of, uh, of making cultural policy. They, the, the all symphony orchestras and opera companies are private to compare with Germany or Latvia. And this is the difference between uh, continental style or, or uh, like, the, I mean, the American style of uh, uh, supporting uh, culture. And this is the di difference I would like to, this, this is that difference. Hi, uh, my name is Arl Berg. I'm from the UK. Um, I hope you don't mind a couple of awkward questions. I know you're a politician, so you're used to awkward questions. Yeah. 
Uh, I spent a few years researching music and cultural transformation, and I, I was thinking, um, obviously, what you described first with the Latvian singer revolution is quite common, but obviously that's not cultural diplomacy. It's a revolution, so it's the opposite. Uh, and, and what I tend to find, isn't it easier to bring people together in a common cause against something rather than, as one often says, building bridges? And the second thing is, um, you, you talk about cultural diplomacy in terms of um, you go to Russia, you're playing with our classical, uh, Western classical music orchestra, etc. Um, well, we, ha we have the West Eastern Delvan Orchestra led by Berenboim, for instance. But, but what we find there is that these are people who already get on well because they're interested in classical music. And it's a, it's a sub global subculture of people getting together and, and it doesn't actually affect anything outside a little bubble. And I, I'm sorry to be awkward, but you know, I think it's an important question to, to raise in such a forum because if, if you want to make a change, you've you got to get a lot of people with you, as we saw in Egypt. You know, the numbers counted when it was a few intellectuals being against Mubarak, nothing happened. But when, when hundreds of thousands gathered, things happened, just as in the singing revolution. Oh, yeah, it's uh, quite important. <laughs> Many... Uh, it's very important. I think, of course, I agree with the first, that, uh, of course, it's uh, much more easier to, to merge people who are against something, and uh, especially the, if they don't have weapon, real, real weapons, uh, that's the, the only way how we can... Um, who can express our power? It's so the music. Maybe it's one of the the, the this, uh, possibilities. Um, the the second, of course, maybe it's it's, it's uh, my my going to St. Petersburg or something. It's very small and it's not maybe it's very significant thing. Of course, this uh, this Diamond Orchestra so, uh, lead, led by leading by Daniel Barenboim. It's, it's of course it's it's more important. Maybe it's not, but it's this the same process. I think it's. it's very, it, it the same and and it's very very good and it's a very good example. I had in my speech as well some some topic about this orchestra, but I, I just cut <laughs> a little bit uh, from that. But it's really I think it's one of the best examples uh, how we can how we, we can use music as uh, as diplomacy. That's maybe if I'm uh, yeah. Hello, uh, I'm Jaikar from India. Uh, I actually had more of a comment to add on to what you were speaking about how music was a good, is continuing to be a good bridge between Latvia and Russia. I mean, the whole world knows about the tensions between India and Pakistan. And uh, what is pretty significant is off late in the last two, three years, India has seen a lot of Pakistani musicians who've come down to perform in India. And they've actually met with very good success from the general public in India. So what, what this is, this is probably an example of building bridges because uh, at some stage there is a political level dialogue happening but the general public really doesn't care about that beyond a particular threshold. But at the ground level it's more the musical exchange that's happening between the countries which probably is one step uh, a little ahead in terms of trying to get the two countries together. Yeah, so, so music does have a very strong impact. That's exactly what I said. This is the, uh, music could be always the first step to make uh, music together, it, it always helps and it, it always works. So, any questions? Yes. Minister, you were during 50 years under Russian occupation. How did you make it to keep alive your own culture, your language, your music? What did you do to keep it? Oh, <laughs> it's a wide question. Of course, it was, uh, you know, um, from uh, one hand, uh, the, this time was very hard for uh, for our uh, culture, uh, for uh, cultural uh, environment, Latvian culture. Environment. From the other hand, we had some support as well from state in that period, especially uh, this level of um, um, amateur uh, arts and uh, it wasn't so bad for that of course in the last period this uh, uh, policy of uh, Russification was m getting a little bit stronger but of course uh, Latvian uh, folklore, Latvian uh, songs and uh, poetry, uh, national poetry it, it really helps uh, helped a lot 
to, to survive uh, our culture during this 50 years. But, but you know, the Latvia is a very small country and it's always was, uh, almost always was occupied by several uh, different countries. And uh, this is finally, we, we get uh, just um, independence now. And uh, we used to uh, live under other rules and, uh, um, and uh, it's, um, we have some traditions how to, how to keep it. And it's, it's really uh, unbelievable that during this last uh, almost 800 years, under the, other, uh, the pressure of other culture, we survived that and we still, we, just, we are a very small nation. We are just uh, Latvian speaking for uh, people. We have just 1.5 million. It's, it's almost nothing, but we have everything. We have literature, we have the national music, we have uh, as well lot, everything what uh, in the termino terminology in science, uh, this is very important, we have in Latvia almost everything. And uh, it's very important uh, that we survive. But I can say that now, nowadays, it's uh, not uh, even not easier to, to survive our cultural diversity because uh, this uh, globalization and many and uh, the stream of information and the uh, uh, very deep impact from different cultures and it's coming very close and it's not easy it, to, if I'm minister of culture it's uh, it's really mm, it's very difficult uh, issue how, how we can uh, organize and it's it it costs very uh, it a uh, very high price, I can say honestly, for, uh, for budget as well to, to have this diversity. And but uh, I think it's very important but because the, all such small things, all such small uh, uh, cultures uh, all over the world are the big value and it's, it's really uh, very important to survive all such small things because, uh, uh, for example, you can imagine we would lose lot of things and of maybe some part of humanity if we will start to talk in w just in one language uh, the to speak the same language just one language just one songs and it oh, everything will be the same all over the world i think we will lose many things and it's, it's very very important that we have something like that and i am modern uh, Man, I am very, uh, still quite young, and I, I of course, are using everything, and but uh, modern things and gadgets and uh, etc. But at the same time, I think it's very important that we uh, we have such very interesting things. We are we are going to to some other countries, to China, to what is in, what is interesting? Not uh, my MacBook or my iPad. It's, it's everything. But we are looking for something very interesting, very special. And this is the obligation for all of us to, to survive such things. And it is the, it's not uh, the case that it's not the, that one culture is better than other. It's never like that. All, all such big or small country, uh, cultures are very, very important for all this big, I, I call over, all, over is this big necklace. Because if you have such things, everything is very, very important in, in that. Every small uh, jewel in, in such... Uh, the big necklace of cultures of the world, and that's that's my, my it, it, it's my policy to be politician now and uh, to survive. It's not easy, as as I said. Even now, it's maybe harder than uh, than previous than, than twenty or thirty years ago. Um, uh, it's not, uh, but uh, I still believe. Uh, I still, as, as minister, I can't to say the other way. I still believe. I, th I think that Latvian culture and Latvian uh, Latvianness, I can say, it will uh, live forever, and uh, this, I think, it should be like that, as well as the other small countries, as small languages and cultures. Please. Ian from Ukraine. Uh, I want to ask, according to my knowledge, uh, Soviet Latvia had a much better access to Western culture, like pop culture, especially music, than other Soviet states. I don't do think so, but maybe, yes. Well, uh, Latvia and Estonia. Uh, do you think that was a help uh, for this uh, revolution which you're talking about? Did you think that contributed somehow? Yes, from... Uh, yes, from one hand, I, it would be, maybe, because this... Uh, uh, ideas of freedom, uh, ideas of um, self-evidence, and uh, how can I say, maybe some 
this uh, fresh air, of course, it uh, some some way somehow it came through this uh, pop music uh, as well, and it was. But I don't think so that it was uh, the big difference between uh, between the, the different countries in Soviet time. I think almost the same. But of course, the for example in Estonia it was possible to to watch uh, Finnish TV in that period. It is very important. It is really important because. Uh, there are uh, different kind of information. In that period, it was uh, very important. We can't imagine even now that it's possible to just look at just one TV program in, in TV, just one, and it's the, in the, with the right news, and uh, et cetera. It's impossible, impossible now, but it was like that. And if you have two, two uh, possibilities, it's always very important. Maybe pop music as well, yeah, we had some not very bad pop groups that period. That period as well, yeah, it, it helped. Final question? Okay. Uh, Do you agree with me that music is very, very important? In <laughs> <laughs> or not? Maybe some people also have different opinions. Aha, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you inspired <laughs> the final question. Okay. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, you speak as a politician, a professional musician, and an academic. And I'm just wondering, as Minister for Culture in Latvia, do you um, support projects that are more community-based and that give young people access to creative spaces and how do you feel about the subcultures? Yesterday we talked about rap and hip-hop and graffiti and do young people in Latvia have opportunity to explore those creative Yes, uh, actually in Latvia we have a cultural capital foundation. It's, it's funded by, by state but it's um, a special foundation. Uh, where the independent groups, independent uh, people, independent individuals can go and uh, just uh, ask for money for different kind of uh, activities uh, as well for some uh, 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 electronic music. Maybe it's it's uh, in music in pubs. Maybe some a little bit. It's not maybe just just for commercial music. It's always because they, they have um, judges they are not spending money for commercial uh, things, but you can ask and for um, many, many new theater companies we have in Latvia and the young people are coming together to make theaters and make, make some... Uh, uh, now it's very popular in Riga, especially we have this uh, creative quarters, uh, like four or five in different uh, places in, in, in Riga. And they, are, they have like... A, Community, small com uh, artistical communities, and uh, there are there are artists, um, there are um, uh, musicians, there are uh, and act young actors, and they are, uh, some of them are living there, some of them are just working there, and it's, it's very interesting. So cultural spaces everywhere, and they can ask money, and we have this, um, we have almost 15 percent of our uh, overall cultural budget. 15 percent we. Um, spend for uh, that uh, non-governmental uh, activities. That is that. That was my policy. We we, we just made such border. 15% is more or less. I think it's, it's the, the right. Uh, uh, in our policy, it's it's okay. Of course, in different countries we have a different cultural policy. And as I said, we are we have mostly the same. In Germany, it's mostly funded by state because we are very small uh, market for. Uh, academic art and without a, a straight um, support from uh, government, it's almost impossible to, to have such uh, cultural you know, institutions. Of course, it would be better, it, mo it would be more free and more competitive, but um, of course, we have just one opera in, in Latvia and one national theater in just one and the National uh, Museum, and we should support this, this only because it is like, it's not just theater, it's not just a um, museum, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, something more important for every national state everywhere. And that, that's, that's, I think, but this is 15% we spend all the time and people are coming, they are writing different projects and very interesting things, and you never, never know uh, the result, of course. It's, uh, and some people from, um, some uh, newspapers always ask, well, yeah, we spend uh, such great big money from government, from taxpayers for this awful installation. Yeah, that's that's always. But we, I, I am strongly support that that it's it's very significant because without that, we will never go go further forward. Yeah. Yeah, we have a question. Uh, 
Mr. Dalderas, I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to you for a number of reasons. I think, first of all, it's very important as we discuss cultural diplomacy to think about it not only from the national point of view, but also the, the regional point of view. And here, as we're looking at the European context, I think it's very important to actually also have perspectives such as from, from Latvia. Uh, yesterday, we had the former Minister of Culture of Italy here, uh, and I think there it's looking, it's a very different perspective from Latvia. I think it's a very different history. Uh, and I think for many reasons, I see you as having been the, the most perfect uh, Minister of Culture, uh, in the sense, because you're hard, you're a musician. In the sense, you began actually with that authenticity, with that creativity as a musician, and then brought that with you in your career as minister. Uh, so I think there, I read to you the CV of uh, Mr. Dadaris earlier, uh, and even though it's so impressive, I still think it's just the beginning of the career. Uh, so I'm very <laughs> excited to see what will come. Uh, well, but I think there, if you think of everything that you've achieved so far as a musician, as a minister of culture, it's, it's really, it's, I think, inspiring also for us. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to, to seeing what the future will bring with it. And we really appreciate also the perspectives you shared with us uh, from Latvia, uh, as well as also on culture and cultural diplomacy. So please, if you could join me once again in a very, very warm thank, thank you, you for Mr. Valderas. Yeah.